For the price of one overseas family holiday, you can go boating and have family time every weekend on something like this. So in this video, we're gonna do a bit of a detailed tour of this Zodiac right behind me. Then we're going for a spin. And then I'm gonna talk about who I think would be suitable for this boat and who I think might not be suitable for this boat. This is Freedom Boat Club, by the way, biggest boat club in the world. They're now in Australia. So owned by the Brunswick Corporation, you've probably heard of them. They own brands like Mercury Marine, probably your boat engines, or you've had one before. So yeah, pretty exciting. Um, but we will be also focusing on this Zodiac right behind me. Dan Jones is my name. You're watching Dan's Boat Life. Let's go have some fun. So it's called the Zodiac 6.8 Medline, that's the uh, that's the, the model, so to speak, but 6.8 for 6.8 meters. And we've got a Mercury 150 horsepower on the back. Um, you can do higher horsepowers. And if you wanna see how it runs, just keep watching because we're gonna do that later in this video. Um, but first of all, we'll talk about the design. So she's a rigid inflatable. Um, that means we have tubes around the side and it's a fiberglass hull. Um, so the advantage of that is it's just a better ride because it's giving you a rigid structure and you can cut through a few waves. And having a, an inflatable is, there's many advantages for social boaters. If you want something lightweight, pretty easy to use, and also safe to pull up alongside other boats, docks and structures, um, a rib is always gonna be quite user friendly for those purposes. And because of their inherent lightness, um, there's not a lot going on in terms of weight compared to other boats in this size. They don't burn much fuel. You know, you can do a whole day of boating in an area like we are here. You can burn through 20 litres and, and still have a good day. 40 litres is bucket loads on something like this. So if that's important to you, then awesome. Um, anyway, let's just keep going through the design of the actual boat. Um, here, I mentioned this uh, uh, before, or, or I'll mention it later. I'll mention it later in the video, because if I, I've actually filmed everything back to front today, so that's why I'm getting a little bit confused. <laughs> so anyway, whatever. We've got a bow roller right here, which facilitates the deployment of an anchor, and we have two, um, uh, two cleats just here for tying on to the dock. And then as we enter the boat, we've actually got a beautiful big sun lounge and a forward facing seat just here, which it is possible for a regular sized person. If you were huge, you might struggle with this one. I think, why don't Nikki, you jump on. I'll take everyone to the back of the boat and then I'll pass this camera back to you. So a style of boat like this is just simple. Go places go to restaurants. If you think about the Pittwater Hawkesbury area that we were in right now, going to the Newport Arms, going to the boathouse at Patongo, there's so many waterfront locations, even just going hanging out at the basin for a day. A boat like this, it's gonna get you there at a cruising speed of say 27 to 28 knots. You can go faster if you want. You could take a, a good number of people and then when you get to your destination, you can tie up uh, because you don't take up much space. <laughs> it's not a big, massive, complicated boat. We're keeping it simple with something like this. So let's just focus at the back of the boat and then we can take you towards the front. But first thing I'm gonna point out is the design of this social space back here. There's a bit of multi-function going on. So you can see me here in the corner. That is great for this sort of stance, underway or relaxed. And this is where you're gonna position yourself on anchor. And we've got multi-use on the port side because this does allow access out to the swim platform. So at the moment with the seat down, that's fine. That's quite comfortable too. And let's say probably maximum four people realistically here. If they're adults, maybe some more for kids. But with that folded up, see this here? That just comes out quite easily. And then this just goes like so. And all of a sudden I now have access to the transom. So if you have a look out there on the port side, I have a three-step swim ladder, which deploys off to an angle. So it's nice and far away from the motor and um, quite easy to get up and down on. The starboard swim platform is really just a, a, a diving platform for the kids because just around the middle, we have our ski pole and it's a nice rigid one, which acts very well as a grab handle. So if you're moving your way around the boat, I'll do that right now you can do it. So if you're out here, if the kids want to do 
this they can and still get out to this part of the boat um, engine mounting is all quite professional as you'd expect on a zodiac and the decks are all flexi teak so if you're not familiar with this stuff it's great it's the middle of winter here today yes you know we're in australia winter's not as harsh as some places but i'm barefoot because it's flexi teak this stuff retains the temperature um, or it, it retains a con more consistent temperature than fiberglass so it's just more comfortable that's it it's, it's you can walk around barefoot and enjoy yourself and it's got a bit of cushioning effect on it so it's just a nicer surface to walk around on um, out here on the port side we do have a cold water swim shower which just pulls out logical being close to the swim ladder and i got technical access underneath the floor in front of the motor there as well so making our way forward um, the two big cleats aft we'll cut to some b-roll for those we're using them right now because we just wanted to make the boats look pretty and arrange i hope you appreciate that by the way it took nikki is nikki and i about 45 minutes <laughs> to, to set these up so there you go so let's put that back in place i know right <laughs> okay so it really is that complicated to put it back into position and then when we focus on the center console area we've got two decent drink holders here we have a, a, a foot pad just here if you were stepping off the dock or onto onto another boat but i can't go further forward without talking about this targa arch so um big mike uh thank you for telling me in the comments that six foot seven blokes need to be included in my videos too you are going to be tall too tall for this um, once you make make your way forward in the middle of the boat you're probably going to be okay but you can retract this sunshade and get it out of the way secure it to the targa arch and it will also fold forward that's really for when you're trailering a boat like this it's not going to be relevant in a marina situation where we are right now so we can have full shade we can go full speed with this shade up it has been designed to allow for that or we can retract it and give yourself some more headroom that's all possible um, just get this seat section into shot nikki and i'll just let everyone appreciate i'll sit on that in a second this was quite comfortable and functional um, and i like having dual flip up bolsters for passenger and for driver because if you just have the one flip up bolster that can be a little bit of a disadvantage at times i've got two r faking facing speakers and then i've got storage in here and i've also got plenty of technical access they're not hiding anything it, the theme continues here on starboard you can actually see the construction of the boat you can see your all round white light um, your wiring looms going forward and aft speakers everything is accessible and that is good to see but that's a good place possibly even for a safety grab bag um, just if you need to have quick and ready access to it we do also have storage underneath the back seat getting into the main battery switch and the battery and then the set of console itself plenty professional what you do you would expect on a rib like this to be fair um, but comfortable if we flip up the bolsters this is how much room hopefully you can see that because the wheel is not adjustable so you do have to make sure you can fit behind the helm i'm 5'7 uh you know 75 kilos and i'm fine there's plenty of space here so i would expect most people are going to be okay with this it's a morse controlled throttle so you do just have to get used to operating one of these if you're only used to electric control it takes about five minutes of uh, you know, mental concentration if you haven't done that before but if you're worried about your throttle control just rest your hand and drive it like that when you're underway going through some waves always make sure to use the safety on a boat like this because it is the style of boat with low sides that it would justify that um, key start to starboard of the wheel it's hydraulic steering we've got say, our lights operation just here and bilge pumps uh, and pressure for the shower this is a good place for a drink bottle and a phone we've got usb charging just here so that's the old cigarette and that's regular usbs just there we've got the simrad display with all our engine diagnostics fed through there and the fusion just here i suspect this molding maybe was for a compass i'm not too sure not that anyone uses those these days we have navigation lights um, red and green so red and green on starboard and a decent little grab handle just here through here 
is a great little storage nook which is accessible from the other side so um, you can put the simrad cover down here as you can see we've already got some life jackets in here and that's a good place for many of your foam jackets because um, it's got quick access there and then more access from the front windscreens perspex and even with the curve you can see through it and no distortion that i can see at the moment so because some of these curved perspex ones uh, provide a little bit of distortion to you, you can't see. So in terms of the moving, uh, the available space to us, when you're, when you're anchored, you're gonna be sitting on the tubes most likely. So think of it as, as if you have a zone at the back of the boat, another zone making its way up through the middle and the side, and then your sun baking area up the front. So you absolutely can hang out on a boat like this for long periods of time. Let me sit on the front here. That's plenty comfortable, but also think of a boat like this as a fast, convenient commuter, because really, if you want to go to some of those destinations, a boat like this is perfect to enjoy this environment. Underneath me here, lots and lots of storage. So let's go for a drive. Keep watching. We'll do that right now. Once again, guys, safety lanyard on a style of boat like this is an absolute must. The reason being, uh, power to weight ratio on a rib uh, is quite high. You know, this thing's probably about 750 kilos, 200 litres of fuel. Uh, we're running 150 horsepower on the back, so they will get up and go and they will move quite quickly. And without um, proper control by the skipper, if you did something silly, you might just end up in the drink. Because look, if, if I... Uh, just wanted to fall away from the wheel, I'm going in the drink. <laughs> so you definitely need it on, on a boat like this. The advantage of having all these uh, low sides and the soft sides being a rib is getting off on the beach is really easy. Stepping off to the restaurant is fantastic and visiting your mates um, when you're rafted up in a, you know, a calm bay is really enjoyable. Uh, and the fuel flow on something like this is just going to be exceptional so really factor in you don't even need to factor in uh, petrol on something like this if you're just cruising around at sensible speeds because you'll probably pay more for parking than you would for petrol oh that's right freedom boat club the parking's included so you won't even do that so um, fixed wheel this time we have um, the seated position with the, the wind vortices with this uh, glass, is it glass? No, it's Perspex windscreen, is gonna give me a little bit of protection and it will give me ample protection from the rain. The big mic check, so uh, big mic messaged me saying he's six foot seven and he wants to see what it's like for big blokes. So this is the Dan sight line. That's the big mic sight line. That's one foot above my head just there. So standing, uh, you're going to be into the sunshade just there so you would need to retract the sunshade if you're a big bloke uh, and if you are my height i still have some head height above me just there so factor that in if that's something that affects you oh that's really nice upholstery just there okay cool so footrest is quite comfortable uh morse controls on the throttle so just good old traditional good stuff let's get up and moving have I got a speed on my plotter? Can't see. Let's just get the boat moving and I can estimate that for you. So, yeah, so feel that, guys. She just gets up and out of the water. Uh, manual trim here, so nothing too fancy. She just gets up on the plane very, very quickly. So you do want to have good driver control on a boat like this and make sure you just don't overdo it if you're new to a fast rib. Let's hook it into a predictable turn. Okay, so this sunshade is not blocking my sight lines just here. I've got plenty of speed. I'm doing that turn at an estimated speed of 23 knots and I'm gonna speed her up down the run. Okay, that's wide open throttle. She feels like she needs a bit of a trim up to get some boat out of the water and really get to that max speed there. Okay, I'm moving. That is an easy 33 knots. I'm gonna say maybe 35. And she's tracking pretty well. Sometimes when you trim up, 
boats want to wobble. Okay, we've got a little wobble just there. So to adjust that, you could trim down, put more boat in the water. She's going to be using a little bit more fuel, but plenty predictable. And I wouldn't be driving around at full speed all day. I'm just giving you that as a demonstration. Now let's hook it around through another turn, trim down into the turn, come back to a sensible speed. Drive at 25 to 27 knots. Um, I've got the wind protecting me from this standing position and it's uh, blowing from about here outwards on the side. Okay, let's just cruise around at that speed. Feeling good. Let's sit down. You know what? I reckon I drive from the seated position most of the time. I can see over the bow. My mates are gonna be right here. Um, I would actually run with people only at slow speed actually on that sun lounge because I wouldn't want to hit boat wash and eject them out of the boat. So only if it was dead calm like this and I didn't have any uh, other vessels around, I wouldn't be going fast with someone up there in, in, in that case. So let's just hook it around again. Trim the engine down, increase power through the turn. Now I'm gonna do some S turns, going through a couple of waves there of my own. Choppity chop, feels fine. What I like about the design of this particular Zodiac is that we've got a bow roller built into a fiberglass piece up the front. So you can really hear the water going under the hole just there. That, that might annoy some people, just letting you know. Um, so anchoring, beaching, this boat is going to be a cinch. That's just a sensible design. Not all of them incorporate bow rollers, just for your information. Great. And this, this um, sunshade's actually doing a pretty good job, even at speed. Some of them flap around a lot. This one seems to be fine. Okay, that's quite predictable. Very good. So guys, if you are the sort of person who wants to zip from A to B, or be social, go out for lunch, um, tow biscuits, all that sort of thing. This is gonna be cost effective, a lot of fun, and those warm days on the water uh, are just gonna be really, really good on something like this because you're not too complicated. I think that's, that's sometimes where you need to think about your lifestyle. How busy are you? How complicated is your life? and committing to a boat like a Zodiac, it's not a very complicated boat. There's not that much to go wrong with it. Your day out isn't gonna consume all that much fuel. Um, the process of setting the boat up to go out for the day, uh, setting the anchor up to secure yourself in a nice anchorage, picking up moorings, it's all very simple. The water's just there. So solo operation is an absolute cinch and keeping your guests under control and comfortable and enjoying, let's face it, warm days, you're not really gonna enjoy it on the super, super cold ones because you're all in the wind unless you come prepared. Um, it's all pretty doable, in my opinion. It's all very doable. So there are different ways to own a boat and let's just talk about who might be suited, well suited to this style of boat ownership is what I'm trying to say. Um, you could own a boat privately, go and buy the whole thing yourself, pay for the berthing, pay for the fuel, uh, buy a trailer, etc., etc. That's going to rack up a lot of initial costs and a lot of high running costs. You could also um, go into shared ownership with someone where you own a percentage of the boat. That is also going to have reasonably high but lower than a full ownership cost. Um, but you do own the problems when they come around. Same as uh, full ownership. So if the, something breaks, you are an owner, so you're gonna own those problems. Then there's another way to own, and that's the Freedom Boat Club ownership model. So that is a membership model. It's the cheapest way where you just pay a fee, a one-time fee to enter or join the club, and then you pay ongoing uh, membership fees. Um, it's equivalent to one overseas luxury holiday with your family, but if you value weekend time with your family every weekend for example or quite regularly you're going to get a lot more hours of family fun time 
in a membership model. And the other thing to, to consider is you're not doing any of the work. So whenever you buy a boat, you're signing up to a maintenance schedule. That's like any complex toy. But with a membership model, they're doing all that for you. So who does this suit? Busy people, time poor people. If that's you, if you've got the young kids and you have all the other activities that you have to devote a lot of your time to, that's when a membership model is possibly gonna be very good for you. If you're new to boating and you haven't done any boating at all or, or you're just completely green, that is also when a membership model could be suitable for you because they're gonna train you and they're gonna restrict you to areas that are great for beginner boaters up to a certain level. Who is it not suitable for? Well, if you want to hook it up on the back of your trailer and drive to WA and go around Australia with the boat, that's not going to work. You need to go and buy your own boat. Um, if you want to go offshore fishing, for example, that's not going to suit a membership model either. So just think about how you are, where you are in your boat life, um, and then hopefully those answers are going to become clear. If you're time poor, if you want to save money, and if you just want to perhaps put your toe in the water with further dreams down the line, a membership model is probably going to be quite ideal for you at this point in time. Anyway, hope that was useful. My name's Dan Jones. Don't forget to subscribe. You've been watching Dan's Boat Life. Thanks very much, guys. I'll see you on the next one.